I know you have. Where was I? Right. Uh, Lord Adam sent word to expect two riders for this trip, though I'd almost given up waiting for you two to show. He paid your fares and said that you may be wanting some privacy, so I set aside a cabin at the stern. My lads will see to your horses. The captain points to the rear of the barge where two sets of stairs descend below the deck. Take the stairs on your left. Your cabin is the door at the end of the gangway. If you be wanting some food or ale, there's a tap room in the hold. Just take the stairs on the right. If you wish to inspect your cabin, or if you wish to investigate the tap room. Hmm. Hmm. Let's get drunk. The hold is crowded with travelers on their way north. For most, it is a regular journey home after selling their wares in Fiona. Their purses are full and their mood is friendly as they pass the time drinking and playing games of chance. One of the crew glances up from serving and wiping his hands on his apron hurries over to welcome you to the floating tavern. He points to a plank table at the far end of the hold that is bowed beneath, uh, bowed beneath the weight of several kegs uh, of ale, platters, and food. He asks if you would care for some refreshment. Two jugs of ale, replies Paido, reaching into his pouch for crowns. Certainly, sir, replies the bargee uh, in a servile tone. I have three fine ales to delight your palate. Farinog, Chai Cheer, and Boar Brew. Paido chooses a jug of Farinog. Which will you choose? I'm choosing Boar Brew. I did it in book five. I can do it again. Because I'm a man. That's what men do. They drink men drinks like Boar Brew. I'm just kidding. You know, speaking of that, what is up with alcohol and it's got to be a man's drink? I've always wondered this. If I drank a strawberry slushy, no one would say a word. People would just think, oh, he's enjoying himself a nice, tasty strawberry slushy. If I put a little bit of alcohol in it, now it's a woman's drink. How does that work exactly? Is there some chemical change that I'm not aware of? I did. I'm sorry. Tangent. Back to the book now. As the bargee draws a tankard of boar brew from his keg, you notice that several of the passengers are whispering to each other and casting curious glances in your direction. You catch the words madman and fool in the undertone mutterings that pass between them. The bargee returns and sets the tankard down on the table before you and steps back nervously. <laughs> Silence fills the tap room as you swallow the thick, creamy ale. Pick a number on the random number table. If you reach the rank of primate, add three to this number. You should also give you points for having done it before. Whatever. Give me at least a three or above random number table or I will choke you. You dick! I'm choking you. <laughs> Darn it! No! It's not fair! I, I... No! I... But I... I've drinking it before! Crud. <sighs> you empty the tankard in one go and wipe the froth from your lips. Seconds later, the floor of the hold begins to rock from side to side, gently at first, but gathering momentum until you are forced to cling to the table to prevent yourself from falling over. The other passengers seem unaffected by the violent pitching and rolling as their feet were nailed to the deck. You shout a warning that the barge is about to sink, and <laughs> that they should try to save themselves before it's too late. They cackle and sneer at your concern for their safety, their faces growing larger and more grotesque and the sound of their laughter building to a deafening crescendo. A man in a red coat looms before you, his face twisted and deformed. He grabs your shoulders and you feel his fingers sink painlessly into your flesh. Recoiling in horror, you draw your hand, uh, draw a hand weapon to defend yourself from this frightening apparition. As you step forward to strike a blow, your wave of giddiness robs you of all balance and you crash headlong into the floor. And look, we got a picture of people disintegrating. It's fun. Alcohol is a great drink, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the sudden chill of cold water on your brow makes you open your eyes with a start. Blinking away the droplets, you shake your head, and a terrible pain shoots through your skull, making you curse and grit your teeth. You lose two endurance points. Whatever, I'm going to make that back up. Won't even bother marking it. Darn it! Damn you, random number table. <laughs> All of my hate! Alright. Strong hands lift you off the floor and steer you towards a quiet corner of the tap room where Pido sits grinning broadly. That boar brew packs a vicious punch, he says blithely, barely able to conceal his amusement at the effect the ale has had on you. 
It's got a taste like nectar, but a thick kick of an angry mule, replies the man in red, who has helped you across the floor. As your vision and the pain in your head begin to clear, you notice that he's a soldier. He wears the scarlet tunic of the Tharo garrison, emblazoned with their insignia of the castle and an open hand. You apologize for the trouble you have caused and offer to buy him a drink to make amends. He accepts, but on one condition, that you do not have another boar brew. Darn it, I did it before the dwarves. Uh, oh well. <laughs> I seriously thought I would be able to handle it. I thought it would give me a bonus because I'd done it before. No, apparently not. The Baraji brings the rounds of chai cheer to your table, and you drink to the health of Queen Evian of Telistria. The moon soon becomes much friendlier. Oh, the mood soon becomes much friendlier, and you learn that the soldier, whose name is Trost, is on his way back to his post at the Tharo garrison after enjoying a week's leave with his family in Fiona. As you drink your ale, the sound of applause rises above the hubbub of conversation. An elderly man, tall and distinguished-looking, walks slowly to the center of the floor and bows to his audience. His pale face and silver gray, silver gray hair are a stark contrast to his richly embroidered robes of crimson and gold. He smiles warmly and introduces himself as Count Conundrum, the Prince of Puzzles. For your amusement, he will pose some brain-twisting conundrums. So confident is he that none will be able to answer his riddles correctly, that he is offering twenty loon to anyone who can prove him wrong. A hush descends upon the passengers awaiting his first puzzle. If one and a half geese lay one and a half eggs in one and a half days, how many eggs will these three geese lay in eight days? Oh, Lord. Alright, where was I? Oh, right, right, right. If one and a half geese lay one and a half eggs in one and a half days, how many eggs will three geese lay in eight days? Oh, um, crap. Alright. One and a half geese lays one and a half eggs in one and a half days it means one and a half geese would lay three eggs in three days, six eggs in six days, seven, eight, one and a half, and then another half. So, two eggs. So, three, three, and two, which is eight eggs. One and a half geese would lay eight eggs in eight days. And then you add another one half, so you times that by two, and that's 16. 16 eggs in eight days. Right? Right? I think I only get one shot at this. If I get it wrong, I... I, I uh, yeah, if your first guess is incorrect. So, 16? Let's try 16, shall we? You call out your answer. And at first, the man pretends not to hear. Five, this is the correct answer. Yes! <laughs> uh, I may not be able to hand her my liquor, but I can solve a riddle or three. Hurriedly, he begins to pose a second puzzle, but the crowd shout him down, insisting that he answers your call. A lucky guess, he says, a little flustered at the thought of losing 20 loon. Perhaps our friend... Uh... Oh, okay, takes up the same space as five gold crowns. So, 33... 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. <laughs> All right. Um, perhaps our friend can explain how he arrived at this answer. Yes, how did I arrive at this answer? You reply that the answer is simple. If one and a half geese lay one and a half eggs in one and a half days, it therefore follows that three geese would lay three eggs in one and a half uh, in one and a half days, or two eggs in one day. Oh, uh, much simpler way to solve it than what I did. Thus, in eight days, three geese would lay 16 eggs. Blech. The crowd applauded your display of logic, much to their uh, chargon of the Count Conundrum, who parts reluctantly with 20 loon. Recorded your belt patches, five gold crowns. <laughs> Very well, says Count Conundrum, just to make our journey to Thaur a little more interesting. If there's anyone here who can answer my next puzzle correctly, they will receive 40 loon. A chorus of delightful whispers emanates from the crowd. In the winter, he begins, the ice lilies of Lake Adon double in area every 24 hours. It takes 60 days from the time the first ice lily appears until the lake is completely covered with them. On what day is the lake half covered with lilies? Uh, it would be 59. Because it 
doubles in area, so once it reaches half, it's only going to take one more day for it to double, so the answer is 59, right? 59? Do 59? Do the 59. Wait, 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 I only got one shot at this. Let me make sure I'm absolutely right. In winter, he begins. The ice leaves a lake double in area every 24 hours. Okay, yeah, it's 59. I, I know I'm overthinking it, but, you know, whenever it seems too simple, it probably is. Ah! What? Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I, I thought this was just a completely different thing. What little color there is in the Count's already pallid face drains away. <laughs> the crowd hoots with delight as he nods his head slowly to affirm your answer is correct. As the ice lilies double in number each day, the lake is half covered on the day before it is fully covered. Begrudgingly, the Count adds over, hands over your prize of 40 loot. You know, the first one was a hell of a lot harder than the second one. Just saying, you probably got to uh, lead with that one and then make the 40 loot the other one because I'm just, you, you know, whatever. 48! Haha, <laughs> I almost have a full belt pouch now. That's right, take that all you people that thought I was crazy for drinking boar brew. I can answer these riddles that you can't. And finally for my last puzzle, good god, they're all over the place today. I offer this beautiful treasure, he says as he draws a small silver box inlaid with pearls from his pocket of his robes. This priceless artifact was stolen from the treasure hoard of Valborg the Enchanter, he exclaims. On hearing the wondrous revelation, the tap room comes alive with excited chatter. You are inclined to disbelieve the tale of the box origin, but nevertheless it is a beautiful object and it is undoubtedly worth at least a hundred loon, perhaps more. Silence descends upon the hold as it awaits the Count's final puzzle. When I was last in the market of Garthen, the Count begins, I asked an egg trader how many eggs he had sold that day. He replied, my first customer said that he would buy half my eggs and half an egg more. My second and third customer said exactly the same thing. When I had filled all three orders, I was completely sold out of eggs and yet I hadn't broken a single egg all day. How many eggs had the count trader sold in all? Aw, oh, son of a biscuit. All right, wait, half an egg and half an egg more. And the other two said the exact same thing, so half an egg and half an egg more. Oh, God, all right, all right, all right, all right. This is gonna just, I have to kind of guess, right? Let's we'll start with maybe, no, it can't be 10 eggs. Let's say I start with 10 eggs, uh, so the five and a half, which leaves four and a half, which would be two and a quarter. No. Wow, what? When I had filled all three orders, I was completely sold out of eggs and you hadn't broken a single egg all day. How is that even possible? How do you sell half an egg without breaking the egg? Uh, but this, this is probably going to take me some time and I'm not going to be able to stop until I answer this. Uh, hang on, I'm going to pause it, folks, because this could take like minutes of me banging my head against the table. Hang on. Alright, I'm recording again. I just... Ah, yeah. I've been thinking about this for like three minutes and it's driving me crazy. Um, and, 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 and I didn't want anyone thinking I'd just like go look up the answer. Though I don't know how you go look up the answer unless you just like start selecting every number section until you get the right one. Oh, God. Alright, I'm assuming it has to be a small number. It can't be a giant number. Um, but it has to not break an egg. That's what's bugging me, is how do you do this without breaking an egg? And how do you buy half an egg and one egg more and still be out completely? Or half an egg more? Wait. If he only has one egg left for the last guy... Wait, wait, wait. If he only has one egg left for the last guy, it'd be half his egg and half an egg more. That would make sense. So, half an egg and half an egg more... 
plus another egg and a half. No, plus two eggs. It would be three eggs. Right? Because the second guy would want uh, that and half. Right? That would be three eggs. And then that... I'm losing it here. 